Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all good and welcome to Q&A number three. I'd say that this Q&A is more for like complete beginners and people who are just wanting to get started in property. And yeah, I've just got bits of like general advice through the video as well, so yeah. But before we get into the video, make sure you subscribe to my channel and give this video a big thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it, thank you. So before we get into the video, I know a lot of you guys asked me about getting into rent to rent. Rent to rent isn't something I do anymore. I did it in a past life, hence why I don't really talk about it on my channel. However, Stephanie and Nikki Taylor from Rent to Rent Success have just released a new book, which is the six step system to help you get started in property without having to own the property. Honestly, this book goes into so, so much detail about the step-by-step -step process of getting into rent to rent. It shows you how to find a good deal and how to analyze it. The book also goes through compliance and the different contracts that you need for rent to rent and just pretty much everything you need to get started like I cannot stress how much information really is in this book and in the book they also clear up a lot of questions that people have around rent to rent so I know a lot of people ask like why would the landlord go for the rent to rent model kind of thing so they clear like all of that up and there's also a lot of case studies in the book as well of people who have been successful using the rent to rent model and in the book they also set you different tasks and different exercises that you can do throughout the book which I really love that when books kind of like get you involved with the whole process and it just means that you're really taking action straight away which is the most important thing. The book is available on Amazon as an ebook and it retails for $9.99. And for those of you who are really serious about getting into rent to rent, I cannot recommend this book enough. Okay, so first question, how to get into property and where to start? So I would really start with your reason why and what you actually want property to do for you. Like, do you want property to be something that's gonna replace your income so that you don't have to work anymore? Do you wanna build a massive property empire that you can leave for your kids and your grandkids? Do you just want a bit of extra money every month? You've just really gotta look at your goals and why you're getting started, and then that will kind of help you decide a strategy and things like that. You also really need to have a look at the time and the money you have available, because obviously, say for example, if you're just starting off with a few grand and you've got no time, you need to be doing a completely different strategy to someone who's got a lot of cash and they've got a lot of time Time, do you know what I mean? So yeah, if you look at the time and money you have, this will help you determine which strategy would be right for you. I do have a video on my channel that goes through the strategies and the pros and cons of each of them, so make sure you check it out. And also, the most important thing to do is obviously take action. There's no point in reading every property book under the sun, listening to every property podcast, and then when it comes to actually taking action, you're not really doing much. So it gets to a point where you need to stop consuming and you need to just take action and just go for it. Okay, so I also always get asked about book and podcast recommendations. So the first book I'm gonna to recommend to you guys is Rob Dick's The Complete Guide to Property Investing. And I think this book is really good at helping you find clear objectives and finding a strategy that's gonna really work for you depending on what your needs are. So as I was saying before, you kind of need to work out like why you're getting into property, what are your goals? And I think that this book kind of helps you find a strategy that is gonna help you with your goals. But there is literally so, so much more in the book. Make sure you check it out. Okay, so the next book I recommend to you guys is Property Magic by Simon Zucci. So this book is really great and it's really beginner friendly and it really goes into all of the different property strategies that are out there. And also the book is really good at going into the economics of the property world. And also the thing that's really great about those two books is they do revise them and update them regularly because obviously things change so, so much in the world and what you were doing 10 years ago isn't necessarily the same thing that's gonna work like today. So it's really great that they do update the books. So yeah. The next book that I'm gonna recommend is hands down my favorite property book for if you wanna do commercial conversions. I have read this book three times. I think mom's read it more times than me. And every time we read it, it's like we pick up a new piece of information. So this book is hands down my favorite. And the book is Commercial Property Conversions by Mark Homer and Glenn Dalve. Honestly, this book is just, it's been a real like lifesaver. And like I said before, it's a book that we always go back to. And usually if we're looking into a new deal or we're thinking about like stepping up to the next level, then usually this is a book that we go back to because it's just, it's amazing. So highly, highly recommend for those of you who wanna do commercial to resi conversions. Okay, and then in terms of podcast recommendations, the first podcast I'm gonna recommend is Inside Property Investing by Mike and Victoria. 
we love this podcast and it's definitely really beginner friendly especially if you want to get into hmos they offer so so much advice in their podcast they also interview other people and i think it's always really nice to hear other people's stories just like for a bit of inspiration you know they also talk a lot about their own property portfolio and what's going on like they do updates kind of every month or so which it's always great to hear what's going on in other people's property portfolio and to really learn from it so yeah mike and victoria definitely give out so much free and amazing information so the next podcast that i'm going to recommend to you guys is the property podcast by rob and rob again they offer so so much free information like it's actually crazy how much free information they offer but also with rob and rob you can really tell that they've been there done there got the t-shirt and they've just got so so much experience to offer everyone so make sure you check out their podcast so the next podcast i'm going to recommend to you guys is mark my words by mark homer again another amazing podcast again you can tell that he's really been there got the t-shirt he's actually done a really good series on his podcast recently about how to invest different amounts of money so it starts with like five grand ten grand 25 grand 50 grand all the way up to like half a million i think it goes so yeah definitely check out mark homer's podcast okay so i also get a lot of people ask me for just some like general advice when it comes to property and the first thing that i'd say i know this is really cliche but it is so so true and it is don't wait to buy property, buy property, then wait. And I kind of just think there's never actually a perfect time to buy property. And I don't mean this to sound like shady or petty or anything, but say like, for example, while Brexit's been going on, we've had the pandemic going on and things like that. There's probably been people who've been like waiting for the right time to get into property, but it's like, when is that right time gonna actually come? Like, while you've been on the sidelines, we've been in property and we've been doing things successfully. So there's actually no perfect time to get into property. Like, do you know what I mean? So yeah, I would just say, always remember there's never a perfect time. And you don't wanna look back in 10 years time and think, oh my God, do you know what? Those were actually the days, like those were the days you should have got into property. So yeah. The next thing I'd say, which is really important, especially nowadays is, be careful where you get in your advice from and like i think you can kind of always tell like how legit a person is based on how much they talk about their own actual portfolio and their own actual experiences so like all of the podcasts and all of the books that i recommended before like when those people speak you can hear and you can just tell that it's coming from their own experience and their own knowledge whereas i kind of think nowadays there is a lot of people who have just decided they can just start mentoring like I've literally seen it before and this is no word of a lie. I've seen people get one rent to rent deal and then a week later they've started property mentoring and I'm like, can you even run the thing successfully? Like, can you actually, do you know what I mean? So yeah, just definitely be really, really careful when it comes to property mentors and things like that because I don't know where some of them have come from and yeah. So yeah, when it comes to property mentors, just be very, very careful because some people are just bad minds but yeah i've definitely had people who offer property mentoring in my dms asking about property advice and i'm thinking if you're the mentor in my dms asking for advice what are you telling your mentees like please make it make sense so just be careful some other bits of advice if you're going to do like a jv with your family or friends just make sure that you're like singing off the same hymn sheet like make sure you're both working towards the same common goal kind of thing otherwise it's going to be it's going to be very awkward and you don't want it to be the case that one of you is really driving the business and one of you is really motivated and the other person's a bit like yeah i'm not really sure kind of thing so just make sure if you're jv'ing with someone they're quite similar to you and they're just as driven as you otherwise it's going to be very awkward okay so my next tip is don't feel like you have to have every single little thing figured out before you get started as marie forleo says everything is figure outable so like say for example i might get someone message me who wants to get into property and they might ask a question like what do you do if a tenant doesn't pay and it's kind of like in that moment of time you don't need to worry about that because you need to just focus on the first step which is like finding the deal so don't worry about things that are like too too far down the line and how's this going to work and how's that going to work it's like work out step one before you're worrying about step 20 and step 30 and things like that so yeah just take baby steps you don't need to have every single thing figured out you'll figure out stuff on the way like when we were getting started which really wasn't that long ago like there is so much stuff that we didn't know and then we've just ended up having to like wing it along the way and just google and just find out stuff and ask people so you don't need to feel like oh my god i need to know every single little thing like you'll be fine you'll honestly be fine there's always people you can ask so yeah and i would most definitely say do not worry about what anybody else is doing like just stay clear on your goals and always just keep working towards your goals 
don't get sidetracked and be thinking like oh well this person's doing this so maybe I should do that or maybe I should do this because they're doing that just like stay laser focused and focus on what you really want and just go for it okay so my final bit of like general advice is to be open-minded so funny story when we were first getting into property when people would talk about like raising finance through private investors I was like yeah that's cool for them but like how am I going to raise money through investors like how am I meant to find investors kind of thing like I was just very like no that's for like other people other people work with investors kind of thing but when we were put in a position where we basically needed a private investor to get the deal done and then we ended up working with a private investor I was just like wow like as if this has actually happened kind of thing like I genuinely thought like I'd never work with investors or anything like that so I'd say just be open-minded and there is investors out there for everyone so yeah okay so I get this question often and it is if I want to get into property what should I study at uni and what did I study at uni so I studied business at uni and I did a placement year which was marketing and I'd really honestly say like it honestly doesn't matter like I just feel like the things that you learn in uni aren't really applicable to the property development world kind of thing so yeah I really haven't learned anything that I'm applying now so I wouldn't worry about it too much but I do think that's a great thing about property and property development you don't need a qualification to get into this you just need to educate yourself a bit of determination and you'll get there eventually so yeah and if you do still want to go down the uni route I'd say literally just do something that you're going to enjoy for the three years so yeah like I wish that's what I did I wish I just did something fun because my degree was just irrelevant <laughs> I think a great way to start getting involved in the world of property but not being fully in it is to maybe and I'm just saying maybe because I don't really know but maybe to work in an estate agent because I kind of think like if you did that you never know who might come in like you might end up meeting like a property developer who works with that estate agent and then you might be able to pick up tips and advice from them or something like that and I guess you get to really see a bit of the behind the scenes with the whole sales process and things like that so yeah I think if I could go back in time when I was like 16 or something I'd probably try and get a bit of work experience in an estate agent or something like that but honestly you don't need to stress yourself doing things like this like it's really not essential but it could help down the line you never know how it might help so yeah I think also if you want to get involved in property investment and maybe you already own your own home then a great way to potentially do that is to add value to your own home and then maybe sell it on or pull out some of the equity I feel like that's kind of the old school way of getting into property but there's nothing wrong with it I know a lot of people that have started off that way so we've got like a family friend and that's how they got started and now they've got a pretty big property portfolio so yeah okay so next question how to choose a property strategy so I'd say first thing is be clear on your financial targets for the short medium and long term but then also look at how much money you have now and I'd also say choose a strategy that's going to give you the type of lifestyle that you want long term so like let's say for example back in the day when we used to do service accommodation it felt like we were very much always on and always having to deal with different things like all of the time like it was a lot and for some people they might like that and they might like interacting with guests and things like that and all of the different problems that it might randomly bring to your doorstep one day whereas now where we do commercial conversions I kind of think because the refurbs take so long like while the refurbs going on we do get like a bit of downtime and things like that like definitely my life is so much less stressful and that's the life I'm trying to live like don't get me wrong I wouldn't say that it's fully passive and like we never have anything to do and the money just comes in kind of thing but you know it's not definitely not as stressful as service accommodation was so yeah and then also maybe choose a strategy based on any skills you've got so maybe if you've worked in a hotel before and you've got that kind of customer service experience service accommodation might be right up your street like it could be really good for you so yeah it all just depends really I'd say also as well think about how much risk you're actually willing to take like I mean I'm not going to say like this strategy is completely risk proof kind of thing but it's just something to think about when you're deciding which strategy you should do right next question why do we do HMOs so for us HMOs is definitely the fastest way to get to our long-term goals and I definitely feel like it gives a better return on investment in terms of time and money but we're actually just about to start the refurb on our first single let property which is a two-bed bungalow and for us like 
it feels like we're going through so so much work to do a single leg which is going to bring back like a couple hundred pound a month kind of thing so i kind of just think if there's a demand for hmos then hmos all the way and for us personally i feel like the management has definitely not been as bad as people seem to make out like they seem to make out like hmos are always hell and tenants are always arguing with each other and it's like well that hasn't been the case for us but i mean touch wood it stays that way do you know what i mean but yeah i just kind of think like for the amount of time and the amount of money it takes to refurb properties why wouldn't you try and get the maximum amount back and yeah so yeah i guess you just have to think like say for example if you had a goal of i want my property portfolio to profit 10 grand a month it's going to be a lot slower to get there with single lets than it is with hmos so that's why we do hmos next question why don't we have hmos in birmingham so i live in birmingham for those of you who didn't know the house prices in birmingham are just a lot higher compared to our other main investment area i mean we do look every now and then just to see if there's anything but the prices tend to generally be a lot higher there is also definitely a lot more competition in birmingham i feel like a lot of people have like flocked to investing in birmingham because they just think oh big city so i'll just go there kind of thing so yeah there is definitely a lot of competition and our other main investment area is actually close to my parents home so it's like nearly an hour away from me and it's a really small kind of town and we know the tradesmen really well we've just got like a really good sort of maintenance system sorted there so yeah but yeah 100% I would definitely never rule Birmingham out if the right deal came along but it just just hasn't so far so yeah and I kind of think there's other areas that are kind of 20 minutes away from Birmingham where the prices are good so why wouldn't you just go there instead so that's all all right guys so that is it for q a number three today i hope you've really enjoyed the video make sure you go and check out q a number one and two i'd really appreciate it and don't forget to subscribe and give this video a big thumbs up and i'll see you next time bye